Hi, I'm Chris Shelton, and thank you for joining us. Today I'm with my good friend, Billy Blanks, Tybo creator, and I don't know if you've ever been to one of Billy's class, but he is amazing. Besides the amazing workout that he gives, uh, at the end of each of the classes, one of the things I love about Billy, and this is the reason why I asked him to come on with me here today uh, for this YouTube series, is to talk about uh, God. Uh, because at the very end of a lot of uh, Billy's classes, what I love about after the workout is, is that he actually will get a people together, have every, you'll have everybody come together as a group and you'll give some type of motivational speech or some type of motivational talk. And um, so one of the questions that, uh, that, I, that I have um, or that I get from a lot of my students is this whole concept of God, Christ. Uh, you and I have talked and uh, you know, I use different words sometimes like the universe or consciousness or, or the ego, those kinds of things. And um, I thought it'd just be really a great idea to share um, some of uh, some of your wisdom with 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 everybody because this man is deep, <laughs> <laughs> deep. Like uh, you know, some people I talk to back in the San Francisco Bay Area, they're like, "Oh, he, uh, Billy Blaine, he's the Tybo guy." And I'm like, "Yeah, but you don't understand. Like, this man has stories. You, you ever get a chance to sit down and you have some amazing stories to tell? But, but spiritually speaking, he's he's very deep. And I thought, uh, yeah, why not have a conversation about God and and so, if somebody was to ask you, say, okay, Billy, um, how does God show up in your life? Um, and if I was looking to seek to find the universe, to find this higher self, uh, what would I look for, or, or what would I do in order to uh, bring that into my life, bring that part of my being? Well, I always say to everybody, you know, I don't tell people what to believe in because uh, when you start telling people you got to believe in this, you got to believe in that, then people start to fight back, right? But I always tell people. Everybody has some godness in them. Everybody has goodness in them. You just got to figure out where you want to go. You know, I can say go here, and I can say go here, and I can say go here. But it's going to be up to you to make your own opinion. You know, when you look at life, you say, is there anything out there much bigger than me? Yeah, there's always there's something out there much bigger than you. So what do you do? You got to have a source, you know. And when you go to a source, they're not thinking it, it can empower you and give you strength, give you focus give you joy, give you ha peace, happiness, all that stuff can come back to you and it, it can stay with you. And so when you say, how do you do that? Well, my first introductory to God was through the Bible. You know, and I always say, you guys, this is for me. So when you ask me a question about what I think about God, this is how I got my knowledge and understanding. I've tried a lot of different things to try to find something much higher than me and I always resorted back to the Bible. Yeah, you know, and there's, uh, and like you said, there's so many uh, different paths, so to speak, that lead to Rome, and uh, um, and it's a terminology, and it's what I think for myself when people ask me, you know, well, uh, Chris, you know, years ago I had this, and I'm, I had this anti, uh, I guess you would say, uh, um, connection with the tr the word God, like um, I thought it was this uh, dominating, controlling person or entity or something that like, kind of like we were puppets on the string. And so for the longest time I had the hardest time understanding the concept of God. And uh, sometimes when I talk to younger, younger like teenagers, they say, oh, well, there's no such thing as God. Mm -hmm. And I say exactly what you say as well, too. You call it whatever you want. But the reality is, is that there's something much greater than all of us. And, and to say that there's, uh, that we just showed up here and all the beautiful things that we have, plants, uh, uh, you know, the, the sky, the oceans, everything, those don't just happen by accident. Like, mm -hmm. there has to be something much bigger to, to it. So I always say, too, if you look at it like this, you know, uh, like I do read, you know, so I study because I want to get as much knowledge as possible. So I always ask people, if you look at it, uh, life in general, you say, most people get a life insurance policy, right? if something happens to that one person that takes care of the family, the other people will be taken care of. But they look around, they search, because there's a, there's a lot of different life insurance policies out there, but you want to try to find the best, right? Because at the end, at the end of time, I want my wife and my daughter and my other, other families around me to, to be okay, right? So you say, what is the best? So you say, well, let me go look. So then you start to, religion to me is the same. You go search, okay, what do I, what makes you feel strong, what gives you the power, what gives you the understanding. So when it, for me, it was Jesus. You know, I said, wow, you know, Jesus was a man who walked the earth. So I get a chance to look in the Bible and see all these men who walked the earth and see the problems that they went through. And I go, oh, that's, I went, I'm going through that right now. How did he get out of that? Let me try some of those things and see what happens in my life. 
Uh, then I say to people, think about this. And I'm a physical fitness coach, so I always say to my clients, say this, I got to get my body in shape, right? And so when you say it, I always ask them, think about what you're saying when you say it. Say it again. I got to get my body in shape. So if you guys at home, if you're sitting here, you're listening to me, say that out loud. I got to get my body in shape. What am I doing? People say, well, you're giving yourself a reprimand. You're telling yourself, you're preparing yourself for something. No, I'm saying you separate who you are. Who is I? Mm -hmm. You're saying I got to get my body in shape. Mm -hmm. So that shows you showing me that there's two parts to you. And you're right, there are. I have a spirit, I have a soul, and I have a body. Three-part person. So I'm having a fight. Every day I get up, my body fights my spirit and my soul. Mm -hmm. My body wants to stay in the bed, mm -hmm. but my soul says, get up. Mm -hmm. You know, so how do you how do you empower those three things where you don't have that fight going on? Because when it comes down to it, that's what happens to people. You know, you say, you ever, uh, you ever heard of this term? I'm a sense-minded person. Most people have never heard of that term. And so I look, I look in the Bible and I go, let me see what God thinks about a sense-minded person. And I have five senses and they can get me in trouble. What I see, I want it. What I taste, I want it. Mm -hmm. What I touch, I want it. Mm -hmm. What I feel, I want it. Mm -hmm. So I go, you know, my, if I don't know how to control my five senses, one of them could get me in a situation. Yeah, and you hit it, you know, just, just what you said there in the last minute or so, you touched on so many different things. And, and number one is, is, and this is what I call the ego, the five senses is when, those, when that ego gets out of balance and it says that I want more of that or you know, I need to have this mm -hmm. or I need to have these worldly attachments. Um, I need to have the best car. I need to have uh, this and that. Um, and that's the ego. And the more that we attach ourselves to those worldly pleasures, and, and there's nothing wrong with having things. It's the attachment to it yeah. and what you do for me, it's what, what you go through or what you put yourself through or other people through in order to attain it, right? Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that, that ego is so, so powerful. And for me, when they talk about, about the devil, for me, I heard a, a, a Taoist, a sage, or a Taoist uh, mentor say this one time. He said, there's no such thing as hell because we have hell on earth. And I think what he meant by that was, was that there's so many people that walk around with this ego. And the ego is not just is not just some cocky guy walking down the street with his shoulders back. Mm. You know, a shy person is an example of the ego as well, too. And that ego, that ego, that voice, right, that voice that creates dilemma within ourselves, mm -hmm. and depending on the collective ego, then creates a, a collective unconsciousness, a collective unconscious ego where we see in groups, you know, like what we're seeing right now with all these shootings all over the place, right, where people um, are collectively unconscious because their ego has taken is taking control as opposed to rooting in source, rooting in Christ, rooting in God. And the suffering that Christ talks about, the, the, when they talk about Christ, you know, we, I, I believe that a lot of times that um, we create our own suffering. Mm -hmm. And depending on the degree of that suffering is how much it affects us on all levels, physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, health-wise, right? Um, but also, the groups or the or the 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 many people that we influence in a negative way when that ego is out of is out of sorts. Mm -hmm. I always tell people too, when you because you asked that first question, right? I always tell people the way to know there there is something out there more powerful than you. I always ask ask people this question: What's the most powerful thing in the world? I'm gonna take God out the picture. I'm gonna take God out the picture. I'm gonna put him over here, right? And I always ask that question, what is the most powerful thing in the world? And if you out there listening, I'm, I'm going to ask you that question too. You say to yourself, what is the most powerful thing in the world? What would you say it would be? Most people would say money. Most people, some people would say all different things. But that money thing comes up all the time. I say, if I take a million dollars and lay it over there in the corner by itself, would it be powerful? No. Whoever hands pick it up and put it in its right place or in its wrong place is going to make it either weak or powerful. So it's not money. Is not man. So I say, what is the most powerful thing in the world? For, to me, right, when you say it, it's words. Words. Mm -hmm. What you say out your mouth can either give you life or take your life. Mm -hmm. Nine out of ten times, I always ask people, who words do you believe the most? Right? And people go, my own. <clears throat> who words do you know the most? They go, my own. Have you ever said this out loud? I don't know why I'm going to that job interview. I ain't going to get it. Right. That's too hard for me. Mm -hmm. I'll never be able to do that. Mm -hmm. So always tell people, think about that. You cannot surpass what you think of yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to bring God back into the picture. I'll go like this. Now put him back there and I'll go, okay. 
just for me, and I say to you, if you go look at the Bible, you say, how did God create the world? If you look at it, he spoke it into existence. He said, let there be life. Boom. There was. You ever hear people say about the big boom? Mm -hmm. They go, God said, boom. There was. Light. Boom. There was. He said seven, seven times, and these seven things happened. And then uh, he goes like this. Let us create man in our own image according to our likeness. I like that. God, God said, let us create man in our own image according to our likeness. Ooh, hold on. When God says he's going to make me like him, and he's going to make us in his image. So whatever I say out of my mouth, got to come to life. Mm -hmm. So I say I have to watch what I say. So I always tell people, you want to see if God is real? Think about it. That's how, to me, that's how the world has came about, by what you say. If you look at people's actions, what people see out their mouth, usually comes to action. It says in the Bible, death and life is in the power of the tongue. Those who love it, I like that word at the end, those who love it will get its fruit. Mm -hmm. and what does fruit do? Fruit create other fruit. Seeds. Seeds. Throw them into the ground, they grow. Mm -hmm. And you just see if God is who he say he is. Man, he says, you know, watch the words you say, Billy, because what you say is coming to life. Yeah, you know, Billy really touches on something that's huge for me, um, which is, uh, and one of the comments that I say to myself is when I, because there's really nothing good or bad. It's all perception, mm -hmm. depending on the situation. And, uh, and one of the things when I have, uh, when I've talked to students or I talk to clients and I say to them, you know, um, they say, well, Chris, you know, I have this thought about something like, oh, my wife and I haven't been fighting for a while. I had this thought like, oh, we haven't been fighting for a while. And then all of a sudden I go home and get into this big fight. I said, why? Because all spiritual traditions say the same thing, and that is to be a watchful observer over your mind. Mm -hmm. And it's not only what you're saying, is it's not only what you, the words that you're speaking, like, oh, I can't do this, or I'm not good enough, mm -hmm. um, uh, or I, I have to get even with that person. It's also, you know, we have a saying that uh, the thoughts are louder than thunder in heaven. And so just because you ain't saying it out loud doesn't mean that, that heaven doesn't hear you. Mm -hmm. And so when I catch myself, going down the rabbit hole, so to speak. Uh, uh, not acknowledging something as good or bad just is. Uh, one of the things I say to myself is that to pull me back to the present moment is I choose to co-create with God that I am a conscious observer over my mind. Mm -hmm. I'm a conscious observer or I'm a watchful observer over my, over my mind. And what ends up happening is, is it'll snap me out of it. Mm. Right, it'll snap me out of it, and I, you know, it took me the longest time to to understand, you know, why why is it that if I, if I have a fleeting thought about something, uh, why is it that all of a sudden it shows up? Like, you know, maybe you haven't talked to a friend in a long time, and uh, you know, I had an example where it finally came to truth for me was about three or four, actually about six years ago, uh, coming up towards the end of the school year for the kids, I realized I had a fleeting thought that, you know what, the the kids haven't been late to school all year. Guess what? That night. My wife says to me, here, do you want me to take the kids to school for you tomorrow? Mm. So I said, sure. Guess what? She forgot to set the alarm clock. <laughs> so then it dawned on me. It's, it's, it's being the watchful observer over your mind. And what you think about, you, you actually bring about. So if you want to manifest uh, positivity in, in your life, uh, it's watching the words that you say. And one of the things also I, I agree about money, too, is that there's so many people that I see out there. They may be financially set but they're spiritually bankrupt. Mm. That's, you see that in there, a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You say this too, to, to get back to what you said with the, about your mind, right? I think it's really important. I always tell my clients to say this out loud. Say, and if you guys are home, you want to try this, to say it. Say, I look and act like my mind and will. Say it one more time. I look and act like my mind and will. And to me, that's a powerful tool. What I'm, what I'm saying, I look and act like my mind and will. And then I tell people to say it like this. I look and act like my body. That's how most people are. They look and act like what they see. If something looks too hard, they quit and give up. Mm -hmm. they, if this looks too hard, I don't want to do that. I'm, it's, it, I, that's not for me. But you bigger than that. You know, you have a mind, you have a will. If I have a mind, I need my will to be activated. And what does the mind do? It activates the will so the will can get what you need to get done. So I always tell people, don't look at your body. Look at how you exercise your mind and will. When it comes to a God thing for me, I have a will and I have a mind. It's not my body I have to exercise. I have to exercise my mind and will to be able to do what God is telling me to do if I believe. And if I do that, then I'm going to get good results. But if I don't do that, 
I'm not going to get good results because I'm going to get the results that I feel like I should do. And nine out of ten, nine out of ten times, I'm reacting off of my one of my senses. One of my senses is telling me, you know what, I can do this. I'm going to do something that's quick and easy. But the consequences of that quick and easy might not show up right away, but sooner or later it'll come to me. Mm -hmm. But if I do what, like I think I say, I like to read the Bible, right? So I, and I always tell people, I don't tell people what to believe in but I like to read the Bible and God gives me some answers, right? Because I read this word and the, and the word comes back to me and open and he says, okay, do what you think you need to do. And from there, I'm going to suffer the consequences. If it's bad, I'm going to suffer the consequences. And so I can't blame it on anybody else. That's what a lot of people want to do is they want to blame God. But see, God, why you let that happen? See, God can't control man. Man has power, right? He will. That's what he said in the beginning. I'm going to give you dominion over everything on this earth. I'm going to mm -hmm. give you power. I'm going to give you strength. You own this place. I'll be looking down from heaven, seeing what you do with it. Mm -hmm. And at the end of time, that's what I always tell people at the end of time, that's what I got to think about. God gave me a gift to help people. Mm -hmm. So to be able to take advantage of what God gave me at the end of time, I don't, I'm going to have the answer to it. So I always worry about that. So I always say, you know what, let me make sure, especially at the second part. I'm in the second act of my life. Right? The first act was I'm out there being a strong fighter, being a, acting, doing a lot, a lot of everything. But then it comes a time where I say, you know what, one day I'm going to leave this earth. Mm -hmm. And if I don't have my life right, I'm, and I know I feel, I mean, I feel God every second of the day. And I know when I leave my body, I'm, I got to go be somewhere. Yeah. And I'm going to be asked questions. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know, and it brings up the point that um, is discovering the life purpose. Uh, and I, I think for uh, most people out there don't know what their life purpose is. And you brought up a good point, you know, um, you know the misconception about the word God um, is that it's an, it's an external thing. It's, uh, it's a man thing, mm -hmm. right? It's, it's something tangible. And what I tell people is, is that... G-O-D, G-O-D is. G-O-D is. That is a man thing. If you look at it like that, mm -hmm. it is a man. That's a man thing, G-O-D. Uh -huh. Original gangster. Oh, everybody do it. You know, everybody uses it. Everybody uses G-O-D, right? <laughs> right. So you say, I always tell people, huh, what God are you talking about? Mm -hmm. so, so, you mean, that? so that's a, like, it's too open, right? Yeah. It's too, for me, it's too open, and then it's too hard for me to depend on. You're exactly, exactly, yeah. And I, I, um, and I bring people back to, or um, uh, try to bring people back to the reality of, of, of this idea that, uh, this all-knowingness, you can't put a name on it. Mm -hmm. You call it God, you call it universe, divine, whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. um, whatever it is that helps you understand there, that there is this thing that's much greater, much greater than you, and, um, and that there is consequences to things that you do. Um, you know, and to me, like when you talk about the word sin, for example, like we're all sinners, to me what that means is, um, and, and I'd like to hear your viewpoint on it, what that means is it's like an archer uh, that's aiming for the moon and misses the moon. Like we all miss, right? Mm -hmm. And depending on the severity of us, of, our, of us missing, when we make mistakes, when we make mistakes, depends on the severity of the consequences. Mm -hmm. And uh, to me, you know, because uh, I actually had uh, uh, this young man come up to me and said, well, I don't believe that we're all sinners. I said, well, actually, you know, you do make mistakes. Mm -hmm. And some of those makes, mistakes create suffering for you. And depending on the depth of the of the mistake, it will create suffering for many more people. Mm. So you know you have to be very mindful and watchful because uh, going back to you know if God just had this plan for us and that was it, like then every, we'd all be the same. There'd be no strife in the world, right? Mm -hmm. But what has happened is is that it's given us this ability of free will, and free will allows us the ability to find what our life purpose is, and I believe also to be able to co-manifest and co-create to get closer to God. Quiet the mind, mm -hmm. let go of the ego, let go of worldly attachments, so you can hear its word. Mm -hmm. no, I agree with that, but you know, there's a way too that's for people to see too. When you say uh, I'm, I'm a sinful person, mm -hmm. or that person is sin, sinful, right? When you look at it like that. Well, if you understand who Jesus is, you've been redeemed from sin, right? Doesn't mean I can't sin, but it, when I receive Jesus and make him Lord of my life, he redeemed me from that. So now I'm clean as a, as a sinner, 
I'm not a sinner anymore, but I can sin. I'm a mm -hmm. person who can still make a mistake. Mm -hmm. That's why Jesus came into the world, right? To give people a chance to, to rebuild themselves, right? And what happens to a lot of people, you go, you, you, you know, even when they receive Jesus or they have God, they, I'm still a sinner. Now, I mean, I don't call myself a sinner. I'm not a sinner anymore. Mm. I used to be. I can sin. I'm a believer that can sin, but I'm not a sinner because Jesus redeemed me. I believe that he's done that for me. And then through that, if you go look at the old texts, right, mm -hmm. and you say, uh, how did sin come into the world? Because when the world was first given, brought here, there was no sin. And then Adam created, they went to the Garden of Eden, right? I like to tell this story because I think it's an awesome story. Because you go there and you go, when Adam and Eve went to the Garden of Eden, uh, God said to Adam, don't eat from the tree of knowledge and good and evil. And the day you eat of that tree, you should surely die. So I always ask this question. When you think about what God was asking Adam and what he was telling him, did, did Adam believe that he was going to die of a physical death or did he believe he was going to die of a spiritual death? I believe that Adam thought he was going to die of a physical death. And this is how you can tell when you go to the, the Bible, you read it. Uh, God says, Adam, don't eat from the tree and knowledge of good and evil. And they should eat of that tree, you should surely die. And then they go into the garden and then they go to this tree and Eve reaches up and she grabs the fruit. Before she does that, the serpent came in and said to her, Eve, what did God say to you? Right? And this is what, if you look at it, most people miss it when you read the Bible because they don't even hear that one part. They go past it really fast. She, he said to Eve, what did God say to you? And she goes like this. And he was listening because he wanted to bring something into existence that was already into existence. But if he could pervert it, he would win over God and win the earth. Right? So he goes like this. What did God say to you? And then Eve said, God says not to eat from the tree of knowledge and good and evil, nor shall you touch it. God didn't say the word touch. Eve added the word touch. And what is touch? It's a temptation, mm -hmm. right? Because Adam is sitting over there looking at Eve, and he goes, the serpent said to her, what did God say? God, Eve said, God said not to eat it nor touch it. God didn't say that. God said not to eat it. He didn't say touch. So Eve reaches over, and she touched the fruit of the tree. Adam's looking. When, she t when he touched it, did she die? No. So what is Adam saying about God? He's a liar. So she pulls the fruit. And when she pulls the fruit, did she die? No. So she ends up putting it in her mouth, Adam's watching. He bites it. He asks, did she die? No. Nope. God's a liar. So what did he do? What did Eve do? She passed the fruit over to Adam. And what happened when, he, when Adam touched the fruit? If you look at it in the Bible, uh, what happened when Adam uh, ate the fruit? His eyes opened up to what the world had to offer. And he became now a person who can look and see how to run his life than to become a spiritual person. So he died of a spiritual death and became a worthy man. Yeah. And that's what happens to all of us. I think all of us have a little bit of God inside of us. Mm -hmm. When you're born, mm -hmm. we all innocent. And then all of a sudden, our eyes get opened up to what the world has to offer. And the next thing you know, boom. Yeah. So I always tell people, you know, for me, you got to take what you believe in and you make it be yours. Right. So that's what I'm saying. You know, people can believe in this and people can believe in that. As long as you can take it and make it be yours. And if you can make it be yours and make it work for you and make it do the things that you need it to, to do for you, watch and see what happens to your life. Yeah. Things just blossom and explode. They go like you don't know what. Yeah. You know, um, you know it's just to start to wrap it up here. Um, uh, I could talk to you forever. That's and I thank you so much for thank for, you for giving me the opportunity. Yeah, <laughs> you know when we're at the Fit Expo or something like that, you know we we have these conversations like, um, and I think that people need to hear this conversation, um, especially in this time and age where uh, 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 more people need to wake up because mm. there's a lot of people walking in darkness right now. And there's so much confusion out there right now, and um, people really need to take a step back and wake up and understand that like uh, it's it's three components of your life: your physical, your mental, emotional, and your spiritual state. You know, because you can be as spiritual as heck and not take care of your body, right? Oh, I see a lot of people. I see a lot of. I always say to Christians, if Jesus was to come here and say, "Let me see you run a hundred miles to get to me." Most of them wouldn't make it. <laughs> right. So, right. <laughs> so because a lot of them get on their knees and pray for physical conditioning, and that's not what they got to do. They got to get out and do the work. Right, right. Which is, I believe, the same thing for everything. You know, God can be up there, but if we don't be willing to do the work along with him, then I don't think anything happens. Anything happens, yeah. Yeah, you can pray for as much as you want, but you still got to do the footwork. That's right. So got to do the footwork. That's right. Well, Billy, you're awesome, man. Thank um, you. You know, I, I, I want to thank Billy Blanks again, uh, Jay, Jay Menez, for allowing us to use his studio here today. 
And um, you know, this man, you you have to take his classes. He has you have videos online that you're doing yeah, online. Yeah, we right had now. A, we had a workout called Boomboxing just came out. We got some DVDs. We got if you need DVDs, people don't use that as much right now. But if you want to download a workout called Boomboxing, all you got to go to is iTunes. I guarantee you, you love the workout. Yeah, and check out our book, Qigong for Self Refinement: Total Health with the Five Elements. Uh, click click on the link below uh, to get your free book, uh, and also. Uh, uh, our YouTube channel, Shel uh, Chris Shelton Qigong, where we have these videos as well as other information like doTERRA products, for example. Yes. Uh, things that are going to, all different things that we use to help improve our life, we share with other people. Yes, even fitness. I love doTERRA. They got some vitamins. Woo. They give you the power. <laughs> All right, and so thanks once again, my friend. Thank you. Yeah, I always have a lot of fun hanging out with you and chatting with you. So this is Chris Shelton signing off. Until next time, I will chi you later.